Welcome to the uh, presentation on the um, South um, Servex software. This is an Android software um, that runs on any Android hardware you have available, tablets or rugged outdoor um, devices. So um, the first thing you might want to do is to create a project. So on the bottom here we've got four tabs. So go to project, project manager and go new and create a new project. Um, it's going to be stored in the serpad slash projects folder um, so um, I won't lead you through, oh, I'll, I'll go and quickly show you that um, let's just call it um, new demo. Go, okay and it, I just I chose for coordinate system I just chose use the last values by default so if you're using the same coordinate system every day, um, just use the last ones, right? It's just going to keep copying over whatever your parameters were. If you want to change it, however, to a different one, click the Use Existing down the bottom and then choose the option Predefined and you've got all the New Zealand coordinate systems there. So we won't go through all that, otherwise the video will be five hours long. Right, so um, the first thing is get some data into the controller for staking out or for setting out or old marks to look for. Look for. So come to projects at the bottom there and then the points database and then add a coordinate. So you just go and key in whatever coordinate you want. I'll just go and key mine in. But you could import them if you wanted to. There's an import tab at the bottom there if you want to import a a, um, a CSV or something like that. So I've, I've keyed in my starting point, so you can see it here now. That's the point I'm going to use for um, referencing my survey to uh, out in the field. And as I said, there's a uh, an import button here. You see the import at the bottom. If you want to go and import a CSV that you can customise to bring in, and just import them instead of keying them in. And as well as a DXF as well, you know, for line work and stuff. Right, so we're now going to go outside now and we're going to turn the uh, equipment on. So we've got a base here, so I've just turned the base on. Um, and we've got a rover here as well, so I'll just turn the rover on. I'm just waiting a minute for the base and rover to turn on. As soon as the base turns on, the controller's been configured to automatically connect to it. So you can see now the rover's gone from being greyed out to being blue. So obviously I'm now connected to the rover. The base has started broadcasting automatically. And if we just wait another 10-20 seconds, It'll, um... Right, so uh, if I just come over here, just turn the tilt off for the time being. I'll just show you um, where I'm set up. So, you know, we've got the the base on the uh, on the tripod here and we've got a rover on a pole there that's what I just came out and turned on we've got a control point on the ground here that's the starting coordinate that I've um, entered into the controller so obviously when the uh, base 
um, starts transmitting, it doesn't really know where it is. So the first thing that we need to do is to work out, uh, is to go and, um, you know, fit the survey to that control point. So we come to the project folder at the bottom there on the left, and we come to calibrate point. And then we choose marker point calibration. So the second one down from the top. So I'm just going to come over to my control point now with the rover. I'm going to plumb my rover over the control point. So first of all I'm going to say what's the known coordinate. We could key it in. I'm going to choose it from my list. Um, and then we're going to, I'm going to plumb my pole over the control point, get it nice and plumb. And then measure. And I'm going to go, okay. Save and apply. So so I click save and apply and you can see it's populated that, that box down the bottom with shift DX, shift DY, shift DZ. So that's the adjustments that are going to be applied to my base now to fit this control point. I'm going to go apply and then I'm going to go OK. And now you'll find when I come into survey and I come and point stake out and I come and choose my control point. see I'm fitting, I've now plumbed the pole over the control point and you can see it's fitting really well. So that means that I've applied my um, localization via this calibrate point menu, I've applied it correctly. Now of course we should go and stake out a second control point, just make sure everything's working correctly. I don't have one here so I'm trying to keep the video short. So off you go and do your survey. Now if you come back to the site the next day, or maybe you've had a power failure on the base, we'll just turn the base off. So the base is now turned off, so we just assume we've gone home for the night. Coming back the next morning, and we're going to continue work on the same site. So I'll just let the position go float. Um, okay, so you can see we've lost our base. So I'm going to turn the base on now, like I've come back to site the next morning, set it up wherever, and it gets a current here position. So just give it 30 seconds a minute for the base to start up. Just uh, waiting for that base. So the base is just starting to hopefully transmit in the next few seconds. Here we go. Let's wait another few seconds and then fixed. So the rover is now fixed. So we're back the next day. Now, if we just try and go straight into our stakeout or survey menu, if we go back to our original fixed. control point. point here. Right, so we're now over the control point. I'm just plumbing my bub. You can see we're out by one or two meters. That's because every time you turn the base off and on it gets a new current here position. So to fix this problem we've got to go back to projects, come up to our calibrate point, you can see it's still remembering from the previous day um, the adjustments for the base. It's now in a different position. So we're going to go clear. It says, do you want to um, go OK? And go OK. 
and then come back into the mesa. We've cleared all the old values, and then now we're going to come into marker point again. Here's our known point, a point 9000. And we're going to just repeat what we did on the first day. We're going to go measure with the pole plumbed, save and apply. Okay, and now if we come back into our point stakeout, we'll choose that same point again, and you can see now we're in the correct position, so we can continue to um, do our survey. So this is how you um, operate the uh, base rover uh, and redo the um, marker point calibration, which is like a localization. Um, every day uh, when you turn off on the base. Um, now there's one other thing I can show you and this is to do with the comms tab here. At the moment the tablet by default is talking to the rover which is the serial number there 0820. If I want to manually start the base, so for example maybe the base station for whatever reason has not started transmitting so we need to get the controller talking to the base. So you've got to stop the controller talking with the current rover, which is that serial number highlighted. Have a look under the receiver for the base, see what the serial number is. Bluetooth is disconnected. And the base there is ending in 3994, which is that one there. So we're going to highlight 3994, which is the base, and go connect. And now you can see the base is now blue. It means I'm talking to the base with the controller. And you can see the rover's greyed out. So if I want to start the base manually, I can click on the base and say use the current position. Make sure you always choose the differential RTCM 3.2. For some reason it defaults to 3.0, but just make sure you remember to change that 3.2. You've got your radio channel down the bottom here if you need to change that from radio interference right and then click apply and of course if you want to go and set up over a known coordinate you can use input base coordinates if you want to set up over a known point we'll just do a here position so choose your settings and then go apply base internal radio mode. and it's now programming the base to start as a current here position and start broadcasting i'll just wait for it to start and, uh, Broadcasting. So the base is now transmitting. And if you look at the uh, front face of the GPS, there's a row of three lights. The middle top light should be flashing. That indicates the row, the base is um, transmitting. And of course on the rover here, I've left it turned on, so it started uh, receiving and getting the correction even though I'm not connected to it. So to talk, to change the controller back to the rover, you've got to come to communication, stop talking to the base, Look for the serial number of the rover, which is 0820, ending in 0820. Go connect. Bluetooth is disconnected. So the base is saying, hey, I've, I've stopped talking to that. Bluetooth, Bluetooth is connected. And you can see here now the rover is now highlighted blue and uh, it's fixed. So we're off to go and do our, our survey. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for listening.